In this Kotlin on Android development tutorial, we're going to show you how you can share data between fragments using the view model. Welcome to Mobile Application Tutorials. My name's Nigel. Okay, this is the last episode of the series. Um, basically, we're going to be using the view model to share data between our fragments. So we're going to be doing what we were doing in the first two episodes. We're going to do it in one episode. And spoiler alert, you're going to want to use view model. Okay, so this series is a continuation on from these two series. So if you do want to start this series directly and you don't want to do the two previous series, you can get the code from Git and for members on the professional plan or if you want to buy this plan outright for the price of 10 US dollars, which includes all my Kotlin tutorials on fragments, you do get a helper video showing you how you can get the code from GitHub and install it and get it working on your Android project. Okay, so I think we'll make a start. So the first thing we're going to want to do here is remove a bunch of code that we've already got on there. So we don't need the interface, we don't need the arguments, we don't need to do any code in the main it activity for sending our video URI between the fragments. So let's remove all that code. So let's go into our Android Studio. Let's start with the main activity. Okay, so we don't need to implement an interface using the view model. So let's remove the interface call. And I'll remove this breakpoint. So we can just delete this interface function there. And we'll keep the existing code. We're still going to load our original video intent fragment, but we don't need the interface stuff. So we'll go into the video intent fragment and start ripping stuff out because we don't need the interface. So let's delete, attach, and detach, because that was mainly for um, our interface communication. And we can delete the interface. And let's see what errors we're getting here. We don't need this interface object there. We've deleted it anyway. And F2 for any more errors. So, okay, I'm gonna delete this. Basically, let's make a comment here. Um, we'll be using the view model to pass the video URI. And we'll do that when we create it, so it's not just yet created. So there's a video URI there. Okay, I'm not seeing any errors here. So we can move on to the video view fragment. And I'll go on down to the bottom here. Um, new instance, we're no longer passing the URI from the main activity, so I can remove that. Lots of little boxes popping up here. Let's try that again. Okay, I'm just going to simplify this. Because we're not using the arguments here. We're not using that method of sharing our video URI. So let's tidy this up the Kotlin way. Equals, what's the name of this fragment? Video view. video view fragment and we can just call the video fragment there and I will put up a little tag there JVM static just so it gets pre-built for us okay so that's tidied up there am I getting any errors here I should be we don't need the on crate either because we're not using these arguments we'll set our video URI again 
we'll get it from the view model. And we can keep the remainder of this code as it is. And we will need to install the view model first. So if we go back to the website here, I've in, in my article here, I've added a link to the um, address of the view model we need to install. So basically we install it in our Gradle build dependency. So go back into the file here, open up our Gradle build file there. Inside the dependencies here, I'll create a new line and paste that in there. And then it's just a matter of resyncing. That's done. Right, now we what we're going to do here is create a view model class. And this is going to be basically where we can share our video URI from and to. So go into new. So basically I'm inside the package name here. Right click, select new, select Kotlin class file. It will be a class. And I will call this video URI view model. Select OK. OK, and this will, ex you do need to extend the view model. And underneath here, we can just set up our It'll be a variable, we'll call it video URI of the type URI and we can just set that to null for the time being. Okay, so this is the implementation of our view model because we're using Kotlin. Um, Kotlin behind the scenes does create setters and getters for this though we you do use the Kotlin syntax notation for how we do a set and a get. So this is all we need to do for our view model. So now we just need to move across to our fragments and start implementing the calls to the view model to set our uh, video URI and get our video URI. We will now set this value in the video intent fragment. So we'll go into our video intent fragment. Okay, the first thing we want to do is we want to create an object representing our view model. And I'll call this video URI view model. Now I'm going to implement it um, when it first gets called, create it when, by using the Kotlin lazy delegate. So we can call lazy that. Okay, so we'll create our view model and it's the view model providers and we need to provide our activity for that. And then get the actual class itself um, by using our reference to the Java class name. So it's the video URL video, if I can spell video, URI model. We will reference that using the Kotlin notation here. Okay, so that's fine for that. As soon as it gets called, we will have our uh, instance of the view model. Okay, so we just need to call it now. Um, just before I do that, I'm going to create a function because when we call instead of um, loading the video view fragment from inside our main activity, we're going to do it inside this fragment. So we're going to call a fragment from inside a fragment. And so um, I'll create a function for that. And I'll call this start video view fragment. Okay, it doesn't take any arguments or return anything. First thing we want to do is to get the video view fragment object. Create a name for that video view fragment. That's fine, yeah. So we'll call our video view fragment new instance. Now also need to get the fragment transaction 
So I'll give it a name first, Fragment. And we will need to call our activity to get the support fragment manager and begin our transaction. Okay, so we can start our fragment transaction replace. And it's the same container we've got the fragment container and pass in our video view fragment. Let's push that onto the back stack so we can use the back button to return back to it. I'm not going to give it a name. And then it'll be a fragment transaction, and we do need to commit it to make sure the actual transaction takes place. Okay, so we've got the start video view fragment. Now we need to go into our uh, play button. Here it is here. And so the first step here is we want to set the value to our view provider, set our URI value. So we'll call our view model. there and then we can call down to our video URI and set it with the video URI value that we would have got here okay and this is just the Kotlin way of doing our set and let me just do a little check here let's just do a check to make sure our video URI is not equal to null just in case we haven't yet called it Okay, and once we've done that, we can just start our video fragment. Okay, so that's fine. Now we just need to implement the last little bit of code inside our video fragment. So we will go into our video view fragment. And again, we need to get, this is going to be like a getter. So we need, do need to create an instance of our view model. Again, we're going to use the um, lazy notation, but give it a name, video. That's a video URI view model by lazy. And this is exactly the same as what we did before, view model providers of the activity. Get using the <coughs> excuse me Kotlin reference, <coughs> losing my voice, which will be the view. It's video. What do I keep telling you? So it's the video URI view model, and we just need to use the Kotlin reference just to get hold of the name of that Java class. Okay, so that's done. So we just need to go into our on start command. Let's do a check. First of all, let's do a check to see if the, we'll call it our instance of the video URI, video URI view model. Do a check on that instance just to check that the video URI is not equal to null. Brackets there. Now move these two lines here inside our if statement. Okay, so all we need to do here is just to replace the argument going in the set video URI to our view model instance and calling down to the video URI. And this is like a getter. So this is a Kotlin notation of a get of that value. So hopefully it would have been set in the previous fragment and we're just getting it back and playing it here. And so that should be the only code that, all the code that we need to implement for our view model. So let's run this and see if we get the recording and the playback happening through the view model. Right, the application's now started. I'm gonna press the record button quick record of the display here select that now I'm going to select the play button it's all happening through the view model so that's successfully it's successful implementation of the view model where we're basically setting the URI um, in the video view intent 
so we're setting that to the view model and then we're getting the data back the uri back from the view model and the via video view fragment and the code you can just see here and that concludes the using the view model to share data between fragments android fragments and as you can see the implementation of the view model to setting up the class and then just using the setter and getter of the uri inside that class was much easier and it took a lot less code than just one of the previous episodes of either returning the data to from the fragment to the main activity or from the activity to the one of the other fragments so much less code and you also got the benefit that the view model data is maintained through the activity lifecycle that was all supported for us as well so moving forward i definitely am going to be using the view model if i need to communicate data between um, fragments or even between the main activity so no need to implement your own fragment interface anymore or have to use the extra detail extra coding for setting um, fragment arguments as well Wow. And so that does complete, I believe this completes all my episodes on Kotlin fragments. So we've done how to switch between fragments and now how to pass data between fragments. Though I'd be interested if you've got any other requests about Kotlin fragments, just in case I've left anything out. Anyway, so that concludes this uh, series actually. So if you haven't already and you want to get notified of my Kotlin tutorials, don't forget to click on that subscribe button and the little bell thing next door as well just to ensure you are notified of those changes. And if you've got any questions, please note I'm extremely busy and it does take time just to read questions, which I don't really do on YouTube anymore. So if you do want my help, I do provide paid support at code mentor here and we'll set up a paid session for me to help you out with your projects i'm quite happy to, happy to provide that service and i do re recommend that you follow me on twitter and facebook as well i put a handle that can be used on both those accounts just so you get notified of the activities that i'm working on in mobattuts.com anyway thank you for taking the time for watching this one bye for now